Granada Espada could have been fondly remembered as an amazing classic MMORPG, but the developers decided to tarnish their reputation instead. The player base is almost non-existent, with 99% of them being bots, and the updates are mainly focused on milking its community with new cash shop characters. What is this game, what happened to it, and why do I still like it? Granada Espada, also known as Sword of the New World or Sword 2 depending on when and where you played, is a game with a very unique concept. It allowed players to have complete control of three characters without any AI assistance. When I first saw this in 2007, I was fascinated with the idea as there was no game at the time that did anything like this. Actually, even to this day I don't know of a game that does this. During this time, I was also getting pretty tired of mainstream Korean MMOs feeling more or less the same. The huge grinds made playing feel like mundane work, and I kept playing just for the sake of playing. While Granada Espada still has the grind Korean MMOs are known for, the unorthodox gameplay was more than enough to make things interesting. With multiple characters at my disposal, micro, or the control of individual units, becomes the main focal point of gameplay. This added an extra layer of complexity that other MMOs didn't have. Multiple characters means multiple ways to screw up, so there is additional pressure to effectively manage everyone's positions to avoid AoEs while simultaneously keeping up the DPS. As a casual StarCraft player, Micro is not a new concept to me, but I would have never imagined that this mechanic would be implemented in such a genre, and it was very cool to experience. It's almost like I was playing an RTS RPG, as weird as that sounds. Granada Espada also incorporated other RTS designs such as control groups and commands like attack move, making the game much easier to play. It would be pretty frustrating if I have to consistently do every little action for each individual. The hold command called Keep Mode allowed characters to attack any enemies within a certain distance of them. The original intent was to make it easier for players to micro, but obviously everyone knew what the best use for this was, to AFK level. Now it might sound strange to find enjoyment in a game where everybody is just standing around and watching their characters kill things, but if you try it, I doubt you could look away. There's something mesmerizing about your team just doing their own thing and watching enemies drop without having to lift a finger. It was also incredibly useful for alleviating some of the grindiness. I could just leave the game running while I do other things like watching videos about JRPGs on YouTube. We all know how important that is, especially subscribing to those creators and liking their videos. When I feel like playing again, I'll come back to see my characters gain some experience, and if I had a pet, some items too. This also made it convenient to do hunt quests since I just had to find a spot on the map and camp. While this was where a majority of my hours on Steam came from, the times I did actively play were generally enjoyable. The gameplay was just like how I remembered, and it's been scratching that nostalgic itch. Unfortunately, there are some huge problems that make it irritating to play at times, and it's only getting worse. The official SEA server that I decided to join has a huge bot problem that can make AFK leveling difficult at times. Generally, bots are nothing new to gaming and I have always found them to be annoying, but the ones here are the worst. They're like cockroaches in a dirty kitchen, running around and being a giant nuisance. Questing in later parts of the game become a huge pain in the ass because they've infested the maps I need to go to. There are rarely any open spots to camp in, and if there is one, the spawn rates are god awful. It wasn't uncommon to hear people complain about not being able to get the items they need and having to rely on others for help. Luckily, there are some kind souls in the game who, as far as I could tell, always helped when someone needed it. To make matters worse, developers have found no solutions to this problem or they refuse to put in the work. For reasons beyond my comprehension, they think locking new players out of the market board for a good portion of the early game will deter botting. Yep, that definitely works. Good job, team. All this does is create a more frustrating experience for newbies since they can't use the market board to finish their quest, and if they try to hunt themselves, the bots are there. Another alternative is to kill the bots, but besides PKing having huge downsides, the bots are way stronger than the level anyone facing this issue will likely be at. The more time I spend playing, the less I want to play it, to the point that I'm kind of regretting coming to the official server. Usually, I'm all for it since I believe people that put in the work deserve the support, but IMC Games, the developer of Granada Espada, really make it difficult for me to believe they actually care about their product or its players outside of the whale botters that plague the server. They seem more focused on pushing out updates that just flaunt their new cash shop items and the next waifu. Besides the bot problem, the quality of the experience they deliver is, quite frankly, embarrassing. It's so beyond sad, I can't help but laugh. 
Just playing through the story can be challenging when I have to look at the crap they call dialogue. This is solid proof localization doesn't exist, and they just ran the entire script through Google Translate, slapped it on, and said, here you go guys, enjoy. Text also isn't spaced properly, with some words getting completely cut off, while some lines are just outright missed because the time they remain on the screen is too short. It's a shame too. There is actually a lot I love about this game, and clearly others agree, otherwise it still wouldn't be running to this day, almost 15 years later. The soundtrack is among the best out there. It does a great job of matching the momentum of the non-stop combat and is hype. It's like having the perfect gym music to get psyched for a workout. Soundtemp, the group who did the banger BGMs for Ragnarok Online, worked on the music in Granada Espada, which would explain why I'm such a huge fan of it. I also really like the character collection aspect, and it feeds into my obsessive personality. The amount of available characters that can be played is astonishing, with over 200 to choose from and counting. Of course, they're only interesting because they're all unique in some way, and I'm not just talking about cosmetically. Unlike other MMOs, there aren't really any classes per se. Instead, each character has a role that is determined by the stance and weapons they use. With so many options, there are a lot of ways to create interesting team dynamics. Most of the basic characters can be recruited during gameplay. However, a majority of the good characters are actually obtained from loot boxes, meaning this is a gacha game. These guys have unique stances only available to them, and also start off with higher stats that usually severely outclass the free ones. I've always disliked how unfair these types of games are, yet it's something I'm willing to ignore in Granada Espada since I like the way it plays, and I can still get by without them for now. Unfortunately, players like me who refuse to spend money are at a disadvantage. It's as pay to win as you can get. Besides stronger cash shop characters, there are also cash consumables with huge power-ups, as well as bonuses that make the game less grindy. On the bright side, there are still ways to obtain cash shop products without spending real money. I just have to spend exorbitant amounts of time grinding to buy directly from players or doing dailies to grab the limited quantities available from in-game stores. I do appreciate the fact that I did get some freebies like steroids and character card boxes while progressing through the main story, though I can't help but feel like IMC Games is like that drug dealer giving you a free hit to get you addicted so you would come back to pay for more. I'm coming up to the point where I've almost used up all my cash shop items, and I'm starting to feel how much weaker my team is. Good thing I'm extremely frugal, so that kind of tactic won't work on me. So as far as I'm concerned, Granada Espada has some pretty significant issues, but it can still be a lot of fun. The gameplay still holds up pretty well, the content is massive, there are challenging endgame activities, and best of all, the music will grace the ears of those it passes through. A lot of great improvements have also been made to the early game to help new players catch up quicker to the more recent content, such as equipment that scales to your level and quests giving insane amounts of experience. It just makes it that much more disappointing to see the broken state this game is in now. Sadly, I can't see the player base ever growing past the few whale players, and for IMC games, it seems like they're content with that. I expect there are more people out there like me who will return for the nostalgia, but I don't see them sticking around for long. Personally, I don't regret coming back to the game, and would do it all over again. Actually, since I would do it all over again, maybe it's time to try the private server Andromeda. Spending another 1100 hours somewhere else doesn't sound like the worst idea in the world.